What's going on, guys? The Card Guys here with another chart video, also known as the Chart Guys. Uh, we've been away for a little while. We have a nice chart here for you uh, with the release of Outsiders. We introduced some really powerful cards to the format and some, uh, some lots of changes, lots of changes. That's all I got to say. Um, so what we're going to do is we're going to look over a lot of the heroes in CC. Specifically, we're not going to go over Blitz today. This is going to be solely for CC. We just got done with our first round of events. Um, there were two big events. I believe there was a 5K and uh, the AG Open in California. Um, so we had a couple different results there. Uh, people are starting to brew and test with these heroes. We saw some uh, some Azalea things this weekend, so a lot to talk about. Um, Josh has put together a chart here for you. We've got all the CC heroes available. We're going to put them on a chart here, make a kind of a tier list for you guys for where we expect the heroes to be currently. This could definitely change between now and the Pro Tour. Um, we still have a lot of brewing, a lot of testing to do. Um, the meta is far from solved. Um, lots of experimentation to be done. But without further ado, let's get into to the video. Uh, Josh, you want to explain your little uh, chart here before we get into it? Sure. Uh, well, we're going old school today. We're going this classic SABD and C tier, obviously. Uh, there are currently 19 heroes now in uh, Classic Constructed, which is, you know, it, probably where LSS wants the hero pool to be at generally yeah they said they want to introduce you know three four heroes a year they want three four heroes to leave um and they've kind of adjusted the l point system to to match that right so um outsiders brought us two new heroes uh riptide and uzuri but also brought a ton of cards for katsu azalea and uh lexi in addition uh there were quite a few generic cards although you know how useful they are is um depends on each class right um we've we've done tier lists like this before s means these are what we consider tier one these are the top decks. These are the most consistent, most powerful decks in the format. You would expect their meta share to be at least 5% at a major event. Uh, a tier, these are tier 1.5. Uh, this, These are decks that can compete. These are decks that can win. Uh, but they often have one or two things that are, you know, holding them back. Either they're just not as powerful as the S tier decks, or they're not as consistent, or... They have bad matchups into the S tier decks. Uh, B, we consider this tier two. These are decks that with the correct pilot and the correct, uh, uh, you know, luck could take down an event. Uh, but these are decks that um, generally uh, you're not going to see at the very top tables unless they're like piloted by a specialist. Uh, C is tier 2.5. These are decks that... Uh, are lacking in many, many areas, obviously, uh, but we consider them not to be completely garbage. And then D tier, these are tier three. These are decks that um, are going to have to get another set, probably like Outsiders, to help them uh, climb up the ranks. Um, okay, uh, let's get going here. Um, I think what we... So what we normally do is we put... Of deck into S into B into D, uh, just to give you guys some pillars, and then we can kind of fill it out from there. So, are there any clear S tier decks uh, that you know you think would make a solid beacon in the sand here? I think every... Icelander's still S tier, right? Yeah, yeah. Um, yeah. I th I think everything is really going to need a discussion though, because like uh, I think the meta has shifted enough to where everything is warranted. Um, I think I think Azalea is considered favored in Icelander right now, um, and if she becomes you know really good, she's definitely going to push Icelander back. But Icelander mm -hmm. still just is too powerful. Mm -hmm. Right. Uh, so very good. I think Icelander has shown that uh, she can adapt to things as well. So yes. getting caught off guard in one or two events uh, by, you know. The new rangers uh that mm -hmm. that might change right 
Um, however, mm -hmm. some things that don't change is how reliant she is on the arsenal and how there's a lot more arsenal disruption now. Like, you know, mm -hmm. the inertia tokens, there are the arrows that have seek and destroy effects. Um, I mean, this, this indirectly hurts her quite a bit or directly hurts her quite a bit. Um, <laughs> <laughs> but just just in terms of raw efficiency, she's like way up there, right? Obviously, correct. Um, any other thoughts on that? I mean, I I feel like uh, nope. she may not be the top of S tier, but she's still, you know, a cut above the rest, even with the uh, the hypothermia and amulet device ban. Yeah, um, yeah. she's did, still above rate as far as a flesh and blood deck goes. Did, did <laughs> by, she by a long shot? Did she gain any generic cards? Because, you know, she was reluctantly running Command and Conquer. Um, I don't recently. think she gained any. Uh, down and Dirty is not the worst uh -huh. card. Mm -hmm. Okay. No, uh, what's she looking for? He, I, 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 I guess Command and Conquer now is a little bit better, right? So, um, right. Yeah. at worst, those three slots for Command and Conquer could be used for something else to help their match up against uh, Azalea and Lexi if those become a nuisance. Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, okay, let's let's swing over to the other side here. Who is in D tier? Uh, poor and old Levi. Riptide. <laughs> Riptide and Levi. Riptide. Okay. Let's talk Riptide about... Riptide sucks. Let's <laughs> talk about Riptide first then. <laughs> Are we sure Riptide just hasn't been figured out I, yet? I, I am not sure about this one. I'm 100% sure. <laughs> there might okay. be something for talk, him. Talk, talk uh, to I'm going to record Riptide. that snippet. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Let it be known, if you want to beat Riptide, all you have to do, no matter what hero you are, is attack only with attacks that are at their base power or lower. And don't have go again. And don't have go again. So literally just block everything, swing weapon. Block everything, swing weapon. Block everything, swing left weapon. And then the last half of your game, every other card in their deck will be a trap. And they're going to start playing the traps on your weapon that don't trigger. So they're not dealing damage. So they're just a rinky dink azalea that started with 20 unusable cards. So if you guys are having problem with, problems with Riptide, that's how you beat it. And it could be Katsu, Pitch Surging Strike, Kadachi for one, no go again. Like, any deck can beat it, no matter what. That's all you have to do. Simple as that. Well, what if they do, like, tall arrows, right? Like, Because that's part of the fatigue plan as well, right? Yeah, you just block your whole hand. They don't have Dominate, so you can just lay down your hand right, but isn't and move on to the to next. fatigue you? I haven't. Is their actually... game plan to fatigue? So that but... so you would be abandoning the half of the hero effect, is what you're saying? Yeah. So have... just not running any traps. Have... Well, like like if 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 they genuinely switch, like if your opponent genuinely switches as Riptide, can you not adapt? And like if they're if you're swinging Kadachi for one, you go okay, take one, present eight. Yeah, and they block three, and, and then they block with three. They block with three cards. You get rid of uh -huh. one card out of your deck. Correct. And you just you trade start, three for one every time. You start with forty cards in a sixty-card deck because twenty of your cards are traps. So also his uh, a swing for eight isn't one card because he wasted a pump to get there too. Right. It, uh, eight cost him three cards on average. Oh, two, he runs two cards. Like, two cards for six. Whatever. Like yeah, I'm yeah. just they're just making up numbers. Like it's just you're right. throwing a big dumb attack at you with that's on. You know, one big arrow, one big six seven power finals fighting spirit, whatever it is, right? Um, just so, is is I, I I'm I'm just playing devil's advocate. I have no idea. Yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah, I'm yeah. Just... I, <laughs> I I thought the twenty trap Riptide was kind of the week one build of Riptide. I mean, we're still in week one, but I, I assume um, they're not gonna pigeonhole themselves into twenty traps and not be able to do anything. I I think right. right the 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 trap tier list we're not going to do it but they're clearly the <laughs> the uh the majestic traps are obviously good 
uh, right? Because they can only run one of them, right? And then Boulder yeah. Trap is considered really, really good, right? All the other yeah, ones right. are okay. Um, yep. So their their deck might only have six, right? <clears throat> Plus maybe Sink Below. I, I don't know. Yeah, probably. I think the Pendulum so. Trap's quite good, but it also yeah. requires your opponent to attack with Go again, right? Yeah. Yes. So or a re activated a reaction or something. I can't remember. They're they're all a little bit different, but what Nathan said is basically true. You don't want to pump your attack. You don't want to have it have it have it go again. Um. But right. the uh, I, I I'm still not sure that this hero has been figured out. Um. Like the way to build Azalea and Lexi. There were already people that played Azalea and Lexi, and then they kind of slotted in new cards, right? Yeah. Zuri was very transparent what you wanted to do. You went to mm -hmm. FabDB or Fabry, and then you typed in two cost stuff, and you looked at your list and you threw them into your deck, right? Whereas with Riptide, this is actually the most complicated hero to to deck build for. So I I don't know if I'd put him in D, but. This is Let's put him in D C. for Dark Horse, not D for being bad. Okay, D for Dark Horse, <laughs> D for Dark Horse. Well, uh, I mean, if, if, you, if you're going to go with a pump fatigue strat, like, why would you not just play Azalea? That is true. So because I, her running Death Dealer is refunding the cost. You drawing a card off Death Dealer is refunding the cost for loading into Arsenal, which is basically negating the advantage of playing Riptide mm -hmm. if you're not playing a bunch of traps. All I'm saying so, is they reduced his health cost for a reason. I, don't I know think what it was it because of limited. I think it was because of limited, not. But why would they make the CC hero? Is it just like unflavorful to not just double his health? Or exactly, exactly. <laughs> that, I, I, that is the precedent. If you, so, if you look, if if you look at the the health, right? It the health mm -hmm. doesn't actually indicate the power of the hero. Okay, Icelander. <laughs> what it does <laughs> is. If you look across heroes, it's the average amount of damage that that they can deal out, out of, of out of turn mm -hmm. is their health total. Your average, your biggest like blue emeritus scolding is four. So Icelander health is thirty six. You got Kano. Kano on average can easily produce ten damage by dumping his hand. You got Riptide that can play a trap or two. That's two. So he's thirty eight. It's not an in, in indication of power level. Um, I think it's just how how much damage can be dealt on average out of the cycle. The only exception I'd see is Arachne Solitary Confinement. I don't actually know why he has 19 health, but he does. Uh, limited. That's Go probably just limited premium. balancing. Yeah, yeah. that's... Yeah. Okay. Yeah, they played enough games of limited where they determined that he needed to lose one health. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> he probably should have been at 18, honestly. Mm -hmm. He's pretty good. Okay. Uh, we will put Riptide in D for Dark Horse tier. Um, let's move on. Uh, are there any uh, regular, regular heroes that kind of stand out here? Uh, Dorentia. <laughs> Briar is a regular, <laughs> regular hero. Yeah, Briar's official. All right. Regular, let's, let's, uh, let's, let's, let's put these two here. Nathan, you talk for two minutes. I'll talk for two minutes. All right. Okay. Um, <laughs> well, we'll see Nathan I, talk for two minutes. I, 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 I'll, I'll be honest. I, I, I just don't know why anybody would play Briar right now. You, you, you get you get dunked on by the the deck, the first deck we put in S tier. You get dunked on the next year we're gonna put in the S tier. <laughs> you get, I mean, you, you just like there's so many. You have to ask yourself, you know, there's inherent risk when playing Runeblade. But you know, I've already been over the bricking and everybody knows about it. But you do that for explosiveness. But why? Azalea is just as explosive. And she'll disrupt you while she's doing it instead of just giving everything plus three. So yeah. yep. why, why do a song and dance of running a half and half ratio and having... Robot boop, boop, boop. Nathan. Blue cards. <laughs> uh, we got robot Nathan oh, for shit. a second. All right, <laughs> you're back. Uh, you're back. Um, point the fan. Point, back. point the fan. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. It was on yeah. Uh, so, half and so, half is when it hit. Yeah. Yeah. So so like why would you run half and half and have a bunch of shitty earth cards 
just to do what other heroes are doing without having to run the support package. It just doesn't make sense. Mm-hmm. Okay. Uh, Dorinthia is... I'm a little less sure about her position in B. Um, you know, in the last meta, Dorinthia and Briar were in A. Um, and Dorinthia still might be very bottom of A. But because uh, she has a decent Eyesliner matchup, not great against Oldham, who I presume we're also going to put in S. Uh, but traditionally, Dorinthia was very good against both of the Rangers. Um, basically, Lexi, you ran in, you, you, because of Icelander and Oldham, you ran extra blues in your sideboard as Dorinthia. So you could actually pump your blue count to 24, 25 out of 60 against Lexi. And you'd have the fridge to absorb one of her, one of her tempos or her, her turn cycles and you were able to strike back and you had enough blues to fight through the, the, the disruption and once you got Lexi on the back foot you could um, kind of push around pretty easily as uh, Dory and Azalea Dorinthy was born in the WTR meta so she has access to Steel Blade Shunt um, a lot of uh, like Steel Blade Shunt sink below all your cards block for three you have the fridge which you're going to want to burn really quick because of um, there's there's some arrows that kind of can mess with you, right? And there's also a boulder yep. trap as well. So you're definitely going to want to burn your armor quickly against rangers. Um, and that kind of just matches with your game plan anyways. You want to, you know, strike quickly against the rangers. That was always the game plan. Um, so in theory, uh, Dorinthia should be fine against both of them. Um, you know, you time your steel blade shunt correctly. You time your sink blow correctly. You have your fridge. You should be okay. Um, they they can't block for shit <laughs> generally, uh, nope. so uh. she should be fine. the The only issue is that um, we I think we we kind of foresee Oldham becoming more popular. We also if Azalea gets popular, that actually hurts Dorinthia because people start putting unmovable back in their deck. And that uh, was that was one of the reasons why I did not like Starvo is because people were running unmovable, and well, when when people play unmovable from Arsenal against you, you just cry as Dory. So um, yeah, yeah. So I I think she's probably uh, maybe a little ahead of Briar, but uh, you know either low A or high B. We'll we'll put her in B for now. Uh, just you know so they can be buddies in B. All right, uh, let's move on, and let's let's add some more heroes to S here. Um, well, should we speak to the the old up and comer who's decided to make her debut? Send it, Azalea. I I don't I don't know if we can put Azalea in S tier yet. <laughs> mm, maybe I, not. I I a, a for, for almost. A. I'd, I'd okay, a for almost. A for almost. <laughs> <laughs> for, for, for Azalea, I think, like, this moment in time, she is S tier 100%. But after people make adjustments to their list and know to how a to comment, play. <laughs> right, right. Like, yeah. the second, like, I'm telling you, like, reinforce the line is the new staple. Mm. And once people start running cards like that, her performance will deteriorate. Not she won't be bad. She just won't be as oppressive as um, as she currently is. Well, the t- tournament, the tournament scene is a constant. Mm-hmm. This weekend versus next weekend versus the next weekend, and that's what I've always enjoyed about card games. Is because you're able to adapt weekend to weekend, and each tournament is different. And so, you know, the past weekend we saw Azalea. Obviously, she's on the forefront of everybody's mind. She's being talked about. She all of her cards are spiking in price. Yada yada. Um, so, what is the first deck people are going to try to beat when they, you know, put together a different deck to come into the meta? They're going to make sure that they can beat Azalea. If they can't beat Azalea. 
they're going to go play Azalea. So that's we're going to that's the meta we're going to about to shift to. We're about to shift into beat Azalea meta, and right. then who knows? By Pro Tour time, we might be back to she's kind of on the DL again. Maybe somebody figured something out. You just never know what's going to happen. So, right. But for right now, Nathan's absolutely right. Reinforce the lines about to skyrocket in price. Um, buy them now. No, I'm just kidding. Um, but yeah, it's, our stack will. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, they're already fifteen dollars first edition rainbow foils, so that's in, that's wow. insane. That's insane for a rare card. But anyway, um, Azalea, yeah, it's just the meta is going to shift. Um, she's definitely she's got all the tools that you could ever want for a deck um, now, and she's very powerful. So we'll see. I, I think there are two things holding her back. First, um, Azalea fundamentally has to jump through a lot of hoops, which means she can brick. Uh, which mm-hmm. holds her consistency back a little bit. Second of all, she doesn't have a weapon. Um, and heroes that don't have traditional weapons uh, nope. without, you know, ice eternal combos uh, <laughs> can get fatigued, right? So yeah. uh, these are two things that I, I'd i still, you know, put an asterisk next to her. 15 Dominate is still good, though. It is. And well, you know, unlike Bravo, she does just needs to tickle you for one for all the on hits. For... Yep. Okay. Um so we talked about Azalea. I, let's let's talk about Lexi next. Sure. Um I feel like she belongs in A. I really do. I think she's still great, especially with all the new stuff. So as so all of the tools in Outsiders are generic Ranger cards, right? Mm-hmm. I shouldn't say generic yes. Ranger cards. They Vanilla sh- Ranger be, yes. cards, right? So yes. for Lexi to play those cards, she has to give up, you know, her oh, Aria-ness, which is her, you know, disruption mm-hmm. and all that, right? So, and the fundamental difference between them is Lexi will attack you twice, Azalea will attack you once. Lexi has frostbites and Azalea has her specializations, right? Lexi has channel like frigid. Sure. Yep. yep. And uh so there's like we we've seen the you know the emergence of fuseless Lexi as well, right? Um Yes, yes. Ones that are basically saying I'm Azalea with Voltaire. Uh yes. so I mean, you guys have any thoughts on Lexi? Uh, I'll say Lexi was already a good deck, in my opinion. She has her shortcomings, um, but she was already a very good hero. And the introduction of Codex of Frailty as just being a busted Ranger card and Infecting Shot, which any Ranger will look at Infecting Shot as being a good arrow to put into your arsenal, so... I think uh, I think she got nothing but upgrades. I don't know if she's going to be better than Azalea. Funny enough, Azalea might be the better ranger. We'll see, but I'm excited to see the future of Lexi. I think Azalea thrives in an aggro meta, so that's really going to depend on if her disruption is where you want to be. If, if the disruption is not where you want to be, then you play something else. Um, but as soon as you know Briar and these sorts of decks become really valuable um she thrives again so she's always there to kind of balance but i don't know if this will be her meta yeah uh the 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 main thing for for me with lexi is azalea does one thing in one thing only whereas lexi can operate on three different axes where yep. like it's you have the fuse list then you have like the one that does a little bit of ice, but it's mainly just support package for chilling ice vein. And then yep. you have like death dealer ice Lexi, which is just obnoxious, but it, it kind of, it's kind of valid <laughs> now, right? Yeah. And so like I think right now Azalea is better, but Lexi has the potential because like reinforced the line doesn't do anything against Lexi. So That's some true. of the tools that come in to fight Azalea, especially when you like, have a frostbite. Right, like frostbites and like what's an unmovable going to do against Lexi? Most of the arrows are coming in for five, like you're wasting value there. So I think she can take advantage of people hedging against Azalea mm. and be able to 
reclaim the best ranger spot. But currently, she's not. She okay. needs to find. She needs to it, identify the meta, and she yeah. needs to attack yeah. it. And if she can do that, she's better. Yeah, I think a lot of it will depend on Oldham's position in the meta. Lexi being Personally. able to be right. built in three different ways is actually um, a giant advantage because if you don't know mm -hmm. what your opponent is playing, you can make sideboarding decisions. You can even make like wrong decisions the first couple turns of the game as well. Um, yeah. Okay. Uh, speaking of heroes that can be built three different ways. Bye. Dash, Dash, I was gonna say. <laughs> if I can be built a shitty way, a shitty way, and a shitty no. <laughs> um, All right. Um, no, I'll like, do him dirty like that. <laughs> Dash in the previous meta was a solid A tier hero. Some would yep. put it in an S. Uh, <laughs> Alan. <laughs> where yeah. where where are we putting Dash? It's it's a. a tier if you're Alan, a. if it, it's B if you're anybody else. No, I'm just kidding. Um, <laughs> yeah. Definitely I mean, sh Tree Frog's out of here. If you're playing that, you, you don't understand what's happening in the meta. Um, so hang that up. But yep. as far as like, I think mid range dash and like, I think Hanabi's gone too. I th I think she used to be able to build be built three ways, but I think you're basically forced to default to mid range dash now, just based off of the meta, which is still a great deck. It it's fantastic. It has games into a lot of these heroes. The problem is, she can't just add. She has reinforced the line in the deck, obviously, because it's a good card. But she can't just throw it in in any matchup because as she's boosting, she could hit it. And it could throw off her whole and just lose her the game on the spot. So just because she has those cards doesn't mean she can run them against the all the heroes that they apply to. And she has to be very cognizant of that. And, you know, you have to develop the game plan mm -hmm. accordingly. But if she can, if somebody can, then um, I think it's a solid deck. I think it's a solid A-tier deck. I, I think Dash could play the Azalea matchup very similar to the Dorinthia matchup. Um could be, you know, yeah. So I I think the uh the here's the thing. Dorinthia doesn't give her attacks dominate as often as Azalea will, right? So right, and, right. you know uh, Dominate has traditionally been the control killer, right? So um right. like you know Bravo having Dominate on a stick gave him the advantage against Oldim. Similarly, yep. Azalea having dominate basically on a stick uh, might be the you know the difference maker against Dash as well. Um, we'll mm -hmm. we'll see how Dash uh, adapts to the the meta game. She has all the tools she needs, uh, and you know she she has a powerful deck. So uh, we'll we'll kind of we'll put her in A um, for now. Uh, any I other agree. thoughts on Dash? If not, we can move on. No, Pulse Wave Harpoon still good. Still Next. good. All right. Uh, let's. Well, you mentioned Phi. Let's let's talk about Phi. Where Take is away, will it be? Phi. Where <laughs> is our B tier Draconic Ninja at now? In B. Which How he's side of B? From this. this side of B uh, or that side of B? The low end. The low end. The low end of B. Ah, but little hurt that much, huh? Well, now Katsu is just the better ninja, so it's just like, why would you play Fi? Good luck beating Katsu now with all these new on hits. Mm -hmm. Yeah, um, he's just just lost that oomph. <clears throat> so was... Fi used to be, you know, S tier, got bumped down to A tier because of the little ban, and currently the meta game is fairly hostile to Unga Bunga to aggro, <laughs> yeah. Yeah, um, he's definitely down. Okay, to be. he's still good. They're, they're not deck. blocking any dominated arrows anytime soon. No, nope. yeah. yeah, not with he's seven still block. Good deck, but he's, he's not where <laughs> you want to be. Phoenix okay. flame, more like more like pigeon flame. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right, that was a stretch. I'll give it to you. All right. Um, a C tier joke. A C tier, yeah. Put that one in C tier. <laughs> exactly. All right. Let's let's fill in the C tier here. What's uh, a, who, who belongs in C tier? Kano. 
Kano. Say, Kano? Yeah, that's Kano exactly what I was thinking. Sense. <laughs> yeah. He used to be B, but then like the inertia token came out and he dropped his no. C. Okay. Did you guys hear that? As soon as we put Kano in the C tier, there was an uproar of Kano players arguing with us. All at once. <laughs> <laughs> All at once. Every time. So one of the things is that Azalea naturally has decent A B. And Death Dealer means she obviously will have an extra card generally. Ooh, yeah. Uh so I mean Lexi has shock charmers as well, right? So Dash has A B built into her hero kit. Ice Lander obviously has A B to her eye sockets. Uh <laughs> Dromide is actually a pretty huge part of the metagame. Watch out for that. Uh, so these are all things that are very hostile to Kano. And yeah. Kano did not get anything in Outsiders, right? Maybe nope. he wants to play one of those generics? I doubt it. Probably not. He might play oh, wait, kind of uh, dirty. That, oh, no, uh, Regurgitating Slog or something. What's it called? That's or, a Belching Air card. Uh, the gore belching. I, I hear they're looking. Oh, at gore, gore belching, rouse the ancients. Yeah, I hear that's a thing. Uh, I don't know. Yeah. Uh, the yeah. only hero here where that's viable is Dorinthia. If 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 people uh, are Dorinthia. on the fence about running Eye of Aphidia, I don't think they're running gore belching. <laughs> they're not. They're not. Because you don't <laughs> win don't by there. chip. By what you happens if you gore belching with no seven. other attacks in your deck? Uh, it comes you in for banish, seven. You, it, no, you, you it, fail it to banish an attack, zero. and then it comes in for zero. Yeah. Oh, that's oh, okay. minus seven. Yep. That's trash. Yeah. It's got a contingent contingency plan built into the card text. Okay. So so far, I've Good seen two, I've seen trash. two applications of this. You mm -hmm. play it in Dorinthia because you don't have a lot of attack actions. You can play it in arcane focused arcane focused mm. Icelander, which is a viable build in Blitz. Mm -hmm. And that's all. And Benji. <laughs> that's it. <laughs> uh, Benji. And yeah, possibly, Benji's actually not bad. Yeah, possibly yeah. Benji. Okay. I guess. Uh, oh, well, yeah, right. Benji. It's fine. Okay. So <clears throat> we'll put Kano in C. All right. We're about halfway done now. <clears throat> Let's. Uh, Any other obvious C's? Is Viscerai a C these days? Levia? D? C? Uh, I think Levia is a D. She, she's Reinar? still, Reinar she's still C? killing herself, no problem. All right, like, let's one, one, one at a time here. Uh, uh, Levi has got to be D. It's just... She didn't get better, and she still was falling on her own blood dead sword. Like I yeah. played against Man Sant, the man, the myth, the legend, and that so uh, Sunday event on Charlotte, and he was having a great match against me. It was looking good for him, and then he rolled a one on scabs, and he died on the spot. Oh, <laughs> I saw somebody get dishonored on Leviah the other day. And <laughs> That's not good. They, they couldn't. They couldn't turn off blood tests. <laughs> <They just died. laughs> so the opponent laid their hand down for two turns, and then a Leviah. Yep. Um, <laughs> This hero is poised to get significantly better in the next set. Um, I'm sure so, something, yeah. So I don't think she'll be here very long. Same yeah, with, she'll get a codex. Same with Bolton. <laughs> Bolton will not be down here for very long, presumably. Uh, codex. In the in the past, I would I would say Bolton would be in C, uh, but given the amount of disruption now, it's, Ooh, yeah. uh, it is in D, and you don't want to play Raiden into. Icelander, Oldham, or Lexi. That is not fun. Because the the only way to make Raiden good is to play against decks that don't have Frostbites and mm. have a lot of attack action cards. So like Raiden into Bravo, you have a match. You you actually feel like, okay, I could do something, right? But like Raiden into Icelander, into Dory, into Briar, it's just a disaster for different reasons, right? Mm -hmm. um, Imagine playing and, for Blood Rot too. Yeah. You're not charging your soul if you're doing that. Yeah, and there's just a lot more arsenal disruption now. Um, and that's not good for Bolton. Uh, yeah, with, with with inertia on the on the the horizon. I mean, it any deck that's predicated on having a car a specific card in arsenal for like two or more turns 
you just shouldn't be playing it. That's why we put Kano in C is because, you know, you, you do all that, that hard work of finding Aether Wildfire and then you put it in Arsenal and then it's a dominated arrow with inertia and then it just goes to the bottom of your deck and there's nothing you can do about it because maybe you weren't ready to combo then. Um, so it just, it's not where you want to be. The, the, Same for Bolton. The only way I see you possibly salvaging this is um, pitch stacking perfectly, but then you'd have to build your deck very defensively and you'd have to go for a one shot with uh, triple Lumina, which mm. is very mentally taxing. So um, he's in D tier. Dust to Dawn yeah. should give these two a decent bump, though. Okay. Yeah, they'll uh, get a codex each. Yeah. yeah. That, that, speaking of codex, this is also why I'm hesitant to put Azalea <laughs> in S tier, is because that card has received so much uh, hate. Hater raid. <laughs> so, uh, <laughs> hater. The, the uh, I, if if Codex goes, they're gonna suffer quite a bit, obviously. <clears throat> yeah, that will be a hit. That Codex good. isn't going anywhere. You Probably fools not. asking for the Marvel. ban. It's not going anywhere right now. <laughs> All right. Yeah, uh, so. Let's talk about this, right? A his always lived C? in the shadow of Briar. I was gonna say, so. is he in C? C? Yeah, he's C. Is there anything tricky he can do with this new meta? Catch people off guard with? No, the the only alternative that he has, other than his like normal mid range aggroly build, is like he, he has the rune chant build, but it's too slow, and it runs. It does run a lot of dominates, or or not. It doesn't run a lot of dominates. It a lot of, runs a lot of d reacts. But the second you get hit with the Remorseless from Azalea, you just cry because now you have like a bunch of cards that you can't even block with and you lose the game on the spot. Um, so the meta is too disruptive and still too fast for that build. And it the meta is too disruptive for his normal Mob Shrill Rosetta rotation, which will shortly... In RTN season, he's going to lose Rosetta Thorn anyway. So uh, maybe. I mean, who knows? Um, we'll see. Yeah. yeah. Is he a dark horse right now? No, he's C for. <laughs> I don't know. Could be better. Could be better. C could be better. C right, for like chilling. <laughs> okay. Um, Let's get the last two. Okay. Casuals out of the way. Reinar and Bravo. All right. Where do, where do we want to put Reinar? C. Top of C or bottom B? Yeah, he, he thrives against the Ice Heroes. Um, struggles against... I actually don't know how he does into... Uh, how, how, how is he into like the, the Rangers? Well, he, he blocks very well, and he could very easily incorporate things like Reinforce the Lawn and stuff like that. If he played on like the really slow mid range yeah. kind of build, him. like uh, we, like we saw at uh, the calling. So I throw him in the B then. Yeah, I think he could adapt to this. I think he's got potential, well. actually. Yeah. 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 I think there was also a large amount of. This, this is something I, I wanted to bring up with Dromai. It's like, there's a lot of now <clears throat> generic sixes that he might be able to use. Although yeah, Blood Rush Bell does say brute attacks. So... Yes, yes. But he has options now. Much A few more options in that slot. Uh, I agree. Okay, we'll, we'll put him bottom of B. Um, uh, let's talk about Dromai. Bravo. Okay, Dromai? Let's, oh, sorry, let's... Let's get Bravo out of the way, and then we'll go oh, okay. B. Also, in put B. him right in B. B for Bravo because he's pretty good. I'd put him at the top of B, though. I think like yeah, he has really good on hit effects that are relevant. Yeah, mm -hmm. and like about blocking. yeah, like he he's got some game. I he's, I just don't know if like it's enough. Is the question? Yeah, yeah. he's good into Dromai, which we're going to be putting up pretty high Ooh, soon. He so. is good in the Dromai. That's right. Um, Oh, Guardian Bravo players, watch out! Guardian also has the most D reacts of any hero, right? So, um, if any hero can stop dominated arrows, it is actually Bravo, right? More so than Olden. 
Oldham's got that Z-React built in, but yeah. Mm -hmm. That is true, but uh, Bravo has a lot more three blocks. I guess that doesn't really matter mm -hmm. with Dominated Heroes, but... Uh, uh, Anathos uh, still swings for six, which Azalea struggles with. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, that's a great point. Six is a lot for Azalea. Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, you said you wanted to draw my pretty high. Draw my yeah, is either I, on top of I a think or she's S. S. I yeah, think she's she's S. probably S, even though nobody can manage to convert a win with her. But... I feel like her meta share is S, but her actual yeah. strength I don't think is quite S. We've <clears> seen <throat> her not quite get there many many times and i think it's actually because a lot of dry players are not building their deck correctly i think that's possible i think there's a lot of confusion in the deck building space with that deck specifically because you you have the charlotte event that mara did very well in and mara's list is great i'm not i would never i loved playing it i've played a lot of reps with it it's it's phenomenal but I think giving the meta, I don't think that's the correct direction for the deck. I think the more like slow, controlly kind of thing with sigils and things like that um, is the better direction to take. But look at those top four decks, not counting Droma. She historically has been a favorite into every single one of them. She's yeah, definitely she, a favorite she, into Dash. Yeah, she is she, definitely a favorite. Well, some people argue, but the controlly version is definitely favored into Icelander. And then a, a, any ranger historically has been unfavored into Dromine. Very much so, so. So I think she's S tier based off of where we've placed everything else. Mm -hmm. She's probably the bottom of S, but I, I mean. She has very polarizing matchups as most illusionists do. Um, yeah. But the really big aggro is just like, is just not up there. Like, I don't know. Yeah. Like, yeah. Because she has polarizing matchups mm -hmm. and these are the top tier. I think that uh, what Nathan said is, is true. That makes her S tier. She's in very this well meta positioned. Game. Yeah. Right. But uh, Dromai she... is the best illusionist at losing to Icelander that I've ever seen. <laughs> so there's that. Don't forget <laughs> yeah. about that. Right, right. <laughs> yeah. This mm -hmm. meta would be a veritable feast for Prism. Mm -hmm. But yeah. it is what it is. There, There is one that of the heroes is gone. that we haven't talked about that other than Phi, was a nightmare for Dromai. This, this Kat, old fellow Katsu. here. Yeah, so Good Katsu... Good old-fashioned Katsu. Uh, so Katsu uh, is... was one of the worst matchups for Dromai. Oh, yeah, yeah. miserable. Um, the question is, is how strong is Katsu? This is actually one of the dark horses, I think. Where people still have he's a dark horse. Not only is he hard to build, he is also very hard to pilot, mm -hmm. um, and rewards a lot of reps as well. Um, mm -hmm. And I think we haven't seen the final build of Ketsu yet. I think the final build Definitely of Ketsu not. is going to incorporate extra daggers in the side. With Ooh. I, I actually think the correct build of Ketsu is to set up a little bit with the the shuriken mm -hmm. and mm. then get some copies of key cards into the graveyard for bonds mm -hmm. and then go off just blow them out yeah. yeah um i think there's gonna be some incorporation with flick knives as well so um just to get the mom triggers consistently um uh, you have to be very, very careful with the mechanics, though, right? If you flick knives on an attack, that counts as the attack does not hit, but the chain, the, link, does, the chain yeah. link does hit, right? So, and MOM specifies that the uh, an attack action that is a third or higher hits, right? So, um, mm. this is a you know this is something that you know I and I I think that Ketsu has potential. But there, there are some very hostile matchups in the S and A tier, right? Yeah. So that's like Icelander is not the greatest. Ketsu does not typically run close. He, she, he runs closer to like fifteen blues than twenty, twenty two, twenty four blues, right? So that's already gonna hurt Ketsu's matchup against Icelander and and Lexi, right? Um. A lot of the cards don't block very well, and Ketsu's class 
D React Flip Flack is a little bit useless against um, dominated arrows, right? Obviously, great against Dromai, and I think overall Ketsu is decent against Dash as well. Um, but I mean, there's also like what was that? There, there's that uh, Ranger card that like destroys their weapons and stuff like that, right? So there, if, if melting point, melting, melting point. point. So if if Ketsu gets like <clears throat> popular. The meta can adapt to that, right? So that's true. I, I feel like he's in B, but I'm not exactly sure. I'll put him, I'll, next, to I'll put him next to Bravo. Yeah, that's okay. where I was going to put him. It's too bad. I was excited. I thought maybe he'd be like at the tippy top, but really, he's just kind of like lurking on the edges. I think the, the, these are all heroes here in the B tier. Like I said at the very beginning, in the right hands. In the with the right pilot, these are, all well. de- these are these all can do things that, like, if you have reps against Bravo at your a regular, regular Bravo at your armories, and then you come across a good Bravo, oh, they're yeah. gonna they're gonna catch you off guard, right? Same with any hero here, like, they're gonna do things that you're like, oh, oh, they can do that, right? So, um. Yeah. Any other thoughts on Ketsu? He just can't beat ice. That's the problem. Yeah. He just can't consistently beat any ice hero. Mm-hmm. Okay. Of which two, both are very good. Or actually, all, all three. I all say. three all will three, be three. a or higher. I guarantee. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so. All right. We're throwing Oldham into S tier here. Uh, of course. Oh, yeah. yeah. Where is he in S tier? I'd go. I would. I'd say he's best deck. Mm. That's that's my opinion. <clears throat> All right. I don't know. I think given the tournament, it it changes. But um, but yeah, he's <laughs> you can't get rid of him. <laughs> I, th- I think I think the, the reason I think the reason there was only one in the top eight was because he did not know how to build the deck. The correct way you know you have super control you have mid-range you have aggro you know same kind of symptoms from lexi but he's just overall just a better hero and once he figures out where the meta is he has a big enough toolkit to handle any problem does not matter who or what it is have we seen old him start to use peace of mind yeah uh, it's in mine that card's gas okay makes sense should be so, okay, yep. Uh, yeah, Oldham has a giant toolkit and um, the resiliency, like Nathan said, uh, to deal with things. Good, good guardian is good. Yep. Yes. <laughs> uh, do we think that the old Tims that we're going to see are going to be like? Remembrance Warhorn style, more no. defensive, or are we talk about more aggressive. I think Warhorn so. I think, I think they mid- need to be more aggressive now. I think kind of somewhere in the middle, to be yeah. Honest. I think mid range is the way to go. Mm. Okay, so like, that would like, be like Nathan was saying. Like, yeah, you got pe- you got peace of mind and things. You you're, you're gonna have to have a game plan for Azalea, and you're I think have to have... three to four pummels is like fine. Um, okay. and you just in the sideboard, you have peace of mind and Oasis to hedge against a fatigue plan against ranger that doesn't get destroyed by release attention or remorseless mm-hmm. um, okay. oh yeah because they're instants hmm. yep Great all point. right uh let's talk about our other dark horse hero uh, arachne no <laughs> <laughs> no no is he in d tier that's too bad i don't i don't <laughs> think he's in d tier um okay the bottom of C, right next. He's to him. he's in the bottom of C. Uh, the, thematically, I've always thought as assassins as like the people bring the A deck right to the mm-hmm. the A deck in the Starvo meta was Starvo, right? And then there were a portion of people that brought the B deck, which was Prism, to go counter the Starvo, right? Arachne feels like Prism. You could build a Rackney to like completely destroy one deck if you, oh, if you yeah. focus on it. Probably, 
I mean, all these contract <laughs> cards. <laughs> he said, he said, not in, sure, in my head, just, in my head, <laughs> thematically, okay? The, the other contract... one of the best heroes that has ever been printed. Correct yeah. uh, me. So, <laughs> so the, the only issue is that the, the, the card pool in Outsiders did not really help Arachne that much, right? Because he got Codex and Death Touch, yeah. right? That's about it. Yeah. So he, but so did Azuri. So yeah. I mean, Arach yeah. Arachne is is one of those heroes though that like has does something that no other hero can do, right? Which is mill cards. And that's a very dangerous thing, right? Oh, um, he's a couple cards away from being insane, I'm sure. Like, yeah, like Kano is a couple cards away from being ridiculous. Viserai is just mm -hmm. another Mavrin Skies and <laughs> an equipment piece away from being ridiculous, right? So, like, um, I'm not saying Arachne is going to be, like, good anytime soon, but, like, he does something that's very, very unique. And oh, uh, yeah, no arguments here. I'll give it to it you. Also I like it very well. Yeah, he like does block really well. So, uh, if he struggles with yeah. Droma, he struggles with Oldham, he struggles with a Zale. Like, yeah, I just don't, I yeah. just don't see him. He, he needs, he needs a card that like the card they printed at Magic. Which says mill the top thirteen cards of your opponent's deck. <laughs> he needs a card that like costs nine and mills ten cards from your opponent or something. Like something Oof. they have to like take a bunch of damage like to a... do. I don't know. There's something that toxicity... like, he needs an OP effect. If, yeah. If toxicity said, you know, the next attack mill five cards. Deals five or mills five, that that might have gone in there actually. That's kind of cool. Yeah. Yeah, he needs something like that but to like really rip through his opponent's I, deck I instead of. I feel like LSS is going to be very careful with cards that they print for Arachne, because Probably. you don't want Arachne to be the best deck. Because if Arachne is so, the best deck, the format kind of breaks. So what if they made a card that cost six resources? It was a on the board. Whenever you mill, yeah. mill two instead. No, whenever damage you can convert it. Ooh. It'd be too powerful. But like, it can't block. It costs it like would be to too play it and like no shot. It, it probably, too, it probably no shot. Too. Yeah. Deal. How much damage output have on a single card in general? Four, right? Just turning everyone into I must block or I lose four cards. Yeah. Oh, that's. Point, right? Four. Like that. That's the, just too good. From a game design standpoint, printing cards like Ring Titan really risky because an imbalance would be second, right? Yeah. If you play mm -hmm. like Insidious, uh, yeah, bad about enough, that, yeah. turn, right? So if you it could like, be like a legendary, maybe I guess I don't know, something like that. I see that something. But, like uh, that. Silver Bullet also yeah. really suck for a game. <laughs> it's another. Thing. You saw it turn. Oh no. Yeah. <laughs> like, yeah. All right, but, but in, in summary, if I agree, if Arachne two cards, he would be. <laughs> oh. All right, the heroes they got sixty three, three up to eight here. Surprisingly enough, a for yeah, I, 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 yeah, I, th I think a for getting in that ass. <laughs> I, I I I will say that. Day the most fun playing flesh outside of room lit but it's not even close and it, i would actually say it's better mid-range this combo this but it's the second or third most fun I've ever had playing Blood playing that deck because there's Mine's so cool. many decision points like there, there's decision points but they're simple but there's so many that it makes and decision point trying to like make decision points that other people make decision point. and it's just it's a lot of fun if anybody's looking at a deck that forces people to that 
you can just a very mid range, learn a lot of funnels of the game right here at play. And it's also only downside is she's on the and Zelia in cards that counter one count the other. Because mm. if I find a CNC and you line, I'm screwed. Nothing I can do about that. shred. You know, I don't have outs. So it's we'll have those out and they just start blocking six anytime I have an extra card. It kind of, you know, you have a card you can put in a ravel again and go around. That's by the size of your hand. Mm. People will know those ones the more they play against. It's a new deck. You know that when Sam brought. Um, not that, you know Sam's deck and Sam's a good player, but once you recognize those ten lines, I think the power will decrease a little. Okay. Time with drama. Yeah, that's a fact. I think that's the way to. Does she do into Oldham or Icelander as well? Those seem yeah. like Iceland not so much, but actually, it's a very good into Oldham. I have not lost yet. I think I'm. It's Tash. I, th- I think I'm like seven, eight. Oh, like like uh, surprisingly to it. Okay. Blocks really well. It, it's got it, that reaction too, or no skill? When do you run? Yeah. If if. Oh, it's the dagger. And, that makes ah, sense. Vamber. Yeah, that, we forgot about that. That and the equipment dagger. We just came out crown and uh and ran. And, do you think the Oldham's are adapting? Is it the just play like confidence or something? Yeah. They, they no, but is like some player is so used to things off of no information. Always Oldham operates is in an attack. I'm gonna crown part match number, you know, play tic tac whatever, and you know. But Azuri just pulled that off because of the amount of different things you can do. Oh. And none of them are on the board, right? Like, it doesn't have to use bracers. And you don't know when you will say, oh, she does on tunic counter the whole game. I can use that at any moment. And you have to. So you're not crowning shit. Like, that's just, that's just the reality of it. And um, or you're not getting value out of it um so that's just that's part of the game and it's a real fun match i really enjoy yeah. it yeah i think uh it's like here i'm gonna look at it as well that will mind playing it react speed for three for me of somebody what? else you tell, you tell me you like doing that yeah <laughs> mm. those are There's more <laughs> <laughs> but yeah. wait, having, uh-huh. having two, weapons, you know, I was about to say her weapon actually have effects. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Uh, so we placed all nineteen. Heroes. Uh, is there any heroes we want a little bit now that we've kind of put things down? Hey, with this, I am as well. Had to see Bolton at the. He will soon. Uh, the the next rise from the ash a pigeon as Nathan the, a pigeon <laughs> pid, pid, <laughs> pigeon confirmed next set again <laughs> we, we should um, I, I should just I should just like you know pull in next set I'll be like all right so guys tech on pigeon bolt and people call pigeon, pigeon, pigeon bolt. Bolt. I'm like, why is it pigeon bolt? So, uh, let's see uh, I will say though that uh, Bolton and Leviah, if, if Bolton and Leviah are in a spot, that's probably a decent indicator because they oh, yeah. they get like ridiculously broken cards. That they're they're pretty okay. fair decks. Right? So, oh yeah. yeah. Okay. Uh, I will. I will. I will say one thing. If you look at the the only match that's like throw hand out at each other 
is like the Ranger Mirror. Everything else, highly interesting, very mid range, and where flesh and blood is like supposed to be played, where it's bad. Um, so I'll I'll give LSS a th- as far as like you know, think the meta is in, in a even with Codex, even with Codex, Codex is a very and balanced. And anything yeah. was an uprising draft. You got a thumbs up for me. Yeah, and <laughs> limited. I've I've had a blast playing limited, even mm-hmm. sealed. Uh, I think the fa- if everybody knew you had to play pile, then I think sealed would be better. But sealed will never be better ever. Oh, it's yeah. just it, it's too reliant. I opened six packs. This is what I got. My opponent yeah. opened six packs and pulled three majestics or whatever. You know, just there's just too much variance. Yeah. All right. Um, well, so this is our excited for the future. This is our tier list going into, you know, beginning of April. Uh, yep. for outsiders. Overall, fairly healthy meta, fairly interactive meta, as Nathan said. Uh, this is a meta where good players will be rewarded. I think so. Because well, there, yeah, are I think there's a, a lot of exploring lot of to, to be done. Made. There's a lot of decision making to be made before and during a game. So that that seems good. All right. Uh, wrap us up and let's get out of here. Sure. All right. Thanks, everybody, for watching this tier list. I think this is a really interesting one. We haven't had such a shakeup in quite a while. So it's kind of nice to to have some new heroes to look at and not see, you know, just the same old, same old as Alien F tier. Uh, I think this is this is really, really, really nice. But if you guys are interested, we have a Patreon where you can come interact with us, come play matches with us. We have a huge Discord. Uh, lots of people in there always willing to play matches, learn these new heroes. We're going to be d- deep diving into these heroes, really exploring them, making some articles, that sort of thing, and uh, hoping to to get to where we need to be before the pro tour and helping you guys get there as well. So if you guys enjoyed the video, leave a like on the video, subscribe to the channel, and we will see you in the next one. This has been the chart guys. Roll tide. Bye-bye.